Good morning once again. Glad you're here at the Hurricane Workshop. My name is David Visconti. I'm with Center Point Energy Public Safety this morning. Also with me is Oscar Pastrana, Mr. Greg Dietrich, and Dan Robinson. We are the Public Safety Group at Center Point Energy. And again, we're here this morning to remind you about the hazards of power lines all the time, but especially during a hurricane when they could be down on the ground and they look harmless. What we have is an arcing trailer here that we are going to demonstrate the power of electricity. We will energize this overhead line to 7200 volts. We remind you to stay behind the cones at all times. It's okay to come up to the cones, but we do need you to stay behind the cones. <laughs> the truck and the trailer are bonded together. We have an earth ground over here for safety. We have 40,000 volt rubber blankets. We have a fuse disconnect. All these are safety features along with our hard hats and flash glasses and Greg is going to be operating a 100,000 volt hot stick. The way we create the 7200 volts on the overhead wire is we turn on this generator and it puts out 120 or 240 volts and we run it backwards through a meter and through the bottom of the transformer therefore it comes out the top of the transformer on the high voltage side and produces 7200 volts on the wire. We'll talk about generators a bit here while we touched on the topic. If you have a generator at home we remind you to be familiar with the safe operation of that generator. You want to make sure that it's grounded, that you operate it in an open area where there's plenty of airflow. Everyone knows about the silent killer, carbon monoxide fumes. They can build up, so you don't want to run it close to your home where fumes may go into the home. Don't run it in your garage. And make sure that when it needs refueled with gasoline that you give it a little bit of time to cool down. Several homes were burned down during Ike a couple years ago when people went out to refuel their generators and they splash gasoline on the floor or on the motor. That engine's hot and it can ignite the gasoline. Make sure any appliances you have that you want to run off the generator or plug directly into a generator, such as your refrigerator or your fan, that's the way the generator is designed. You do not want to take a generator and do something like plug it in or connect it to a wall outlet in your home where you think you may get part of your home back on. This is very unsafe. You can cause a fire in the wall. Also, you create a condition known of as backfeeding, where current is pushed back out onto the high power lines, and you could injure or kill someone out there working to restore power. If you have a generator long enough, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, large enough to operate your home, if you're fortunate enough to have that, of course, you want to have that installed by a certified qualified electrician and make sure that you have an isolation or transfer switch that completely isolates your home electricity that you're generating from our grid. You don't want to back feed and push power out onto the grid. This line again will be at 7200 volts but there will only be three amps of current on it. We're limiting it by a capacitor here. Out on the real lines out there, normal situation, there could be thousands of amps. So what we show you here today is really going to be kind of small potatoes to what would really happen, <clears throat> excuse me, out there on a power line. Anytime after a hurricane there will be lines down on the ground, we remind you to stay away from them, do not touch them. Even though they look harmless, you must consider them energized and dangerous. Also anything that they're touching must be considered energized and dangerous. If a wire comes down on a fence, a railroad track, your car, or even standing water, you don't want to make contact with any of these items. They can also become energized. And it's important to remember the wire may be lying there, not sparking. You may think it's dead, but no one knows when the circuit is going to be made hot again in the public. You don't know when that circuit's going to come back on. So you want to make sure, again, you stay away from those down power lines. If you have debris in your yard, such as trees or branches on your property, and you want to clear that out, make sure there aren't any wires in there. 
That's our job to come and clear those trees away with wires in them. We're the professionals, so leave that to us, please. I'm going to ask Greg to go ahead and take the grounds off. Again, I remind you to stay behind the cones. Once Greg is taking the grounds off, we're going to start this up, and I'm going to flip a breaker here. And I remind you at home with your breakers, if you operate them on or off, before, during, or after the storm, make sure you turn your face away from that breaker. Sometimes a breaker will fail. You want to make sure your face isn't right in front of that breaker. Up on the line, we have some items, a tree branch, we have a hot dog, a wet rope, and a dry rope. We have a glove here with a pinhole in it and a hat. We're going to show you what happens with those items and also remind you our power lines overhead are not insulated. Let me say that the insulation actually is the air gap between you and the wire. They are uncovered. So you must stay away from them. Are you ready, Greg? to move down here because the generator makes a little bit of noise. First thing I'm going to do is ask Greg to draw some art. The art that you're seeing is about or could be four times hotter than the surface heat of the sun. It can be at 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit. First thing I want Greg to do is touch the dry rope here. You may see people trying to move wires with a rope. Our crews are contractors. We assure you those lines are de-energized and the ropes they are using, they still use hot sticks. What if you have a rope and it's wet and you try to move a line? This is what could happen. we have is a tree branch. Trees do conduct electricity. They have water and sap at them. Look at the top of this branch. You'll see the steam coming out immediately. It's conducting electricity on the inside and the outside of the branch. If you were conducting electricity like that, it would be traveling on the inside and outside of your body. the hot dog. This is similar in moisture content to your fingers. This is what would happen if you came in contact with a power line. I want to remind you, if you came in contact with the high voltage line, that current is not just traveling through your finger. It's going to go down your arm and through your body. You could at least get third degree burns, you may get sixth degree burns where it burns up the bones in your body. Greg, if you'll show us what happens with just a small pinhole in the glove, please. That's all it takes to cost you your life. That's why, again, we don't cover our power lines with insulation. It will give you a false sense of security. All it takes is a pinhole in the line, and it could cost you your life. The last thing we have here is a hat to show you if you make contact with a high voltage line, your clothes may catch on fire. Okay, was that water? Of course not. Water and electricity don't mix. Greg, would you please draw a few more arcs for us? Greg is going to bleed off the capacitor to make sure there's no voltage still in the line. He's going to put the grounds back on. This is not considered safe until he has returned all the grounds to it. As we say at Centerpoint Energy, if it's not grounded, it's not dead. 
Remember after the hurricane there will be a lot of wires down on the ground. You want to stay away from those wires. Don't try to move them yourself. And remember anything you're in contact with can also be energized and you never know when the circuit is going to become hot again. Are there any questions today? Yes ma'am. Why is the bird okay up on the line? The reason the bird is okay on that line is because that bird is up there, as soon as it lands on the line, it's at the same voltage as the wire, but voltage does not kill. What does kill is current. Voltage is the unit used to measure electrical pressure. Current, measured in amps, is the rate of flow of the electricity through the conductor. It's the amps that kill you, it only takes a tenth of an amp to cost you your life. It's not very much. Just three of those little four watt night lights is enough to cost you your life. Again, the bird lands up there, it's not conducting electricity. Just like if you're in your car, say a wire comes down on your car after the hurricane, you want to go out to your car, you don't want to touch that car. Again, anything could be energized, but if you're in a car and a wire comes down on it, you're just like the bird. You can stay in your car and you're fine. You're at the same voltage as the wire, but you're not conducting electricity. If you open the door and step out and touch the ground, then you're in trouble. Best thing to do is just stay in the vehicle, dial 911, call Center Point Energy, we'll come out, de energize it, you can get out of the vehicle. If for some reason you need to get out of that vehicle, if it would catch on fire or water was rising or something, the proper way to exit the vehicle safely is to open the door, stand on the rocker panel of the vehicle, jump out with both feet and your arms at your side, do not return to the vehicle, don't touch the vehicle on the ground at the same time, and then just shuffle your feet away for about 30 or 40 feet and you'll be all right. That was a very good question. I often get that question. Why is that bird okay, but we're not? Any other questions? Yes, sir. What kind of distance do you need from a live wire to make sure you're safe? You need to stay away from those lines. What sort of distance? The distance for workers is 10 feet in the OSHA law. This conductor, maybe you saw at the beginning, Greg had that up there, the ground, and he got within about three eighths of an inch. That's what it takes for that arc to spark over. On our higher voltage lines, let's say our transmission towers, which run up to 345,000 volts, I want to say, it might come off or arc over about a foot. Once you make the arc, you can draw it away. Now, even though you have to get three eighths of an inch away, before it will arc over. Do you want to get that close? No. You want to stay away from the power lines. Again, the insulation is the air gap between you and the wire. Keep your ladders away, scaffolding, if you're doing roofing or painting, any kind of uh, pool skimming tools, all these items you need to stay away from the wires. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can use your phone. You will be safe to use your phone in the car. If you guys want any koozies, you're welcome. We also, yes, we also have a giveaway here. You can have a free koozie, or a koozie at no charge, I want to say. If you'll come up here by Oscar, he's handing them out. Thank you very much. Thank you.